Ask the Podcast Coach for February 25th, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting.com. And joining me right over there, he's back from his uh, special, uh, you know, special assignment, Saving the World, uh, Jim Coulson from TheAverageGuy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. It's good to be back. I climbed 40 flights of stairs. That's what I was doing last Saturday was climbing stairs. So I made it. I didn't die. I didn't <laughs> die in the stairwell. Big thanks to Dave Hooper who filled in for me as well. I heard it went well. So Dave, thanks for doing that as well. 40 flights of stairs. 40 flights. Yeah. That's a lot. It's, it is. It's surprisingly a lot. Like you do, you think, oh, okay, that's not that many. And then you start and everybody starts too fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they get to 10 and they're like, they're done. It, it's a lot like podcasting, right? You get out the gate. Oh yeah. You're, you're, you're doing excited. Everything. You're going super fast. You're doing all these things. Then you realize, oh, this is a marathon, <laughs> not a sprint. <laughs> Well, you know what you could have done, you could have brought with you to keep you going. I could have. That's right. Mm-hmm. A little cup mm-hmm. of joe would get you there. Mm-hmm. And of course, that coffee pour is brought to you by our friend Mark over at podcastbranding.co. If you're watching the video, you're seeing all of his work scroll by. The cool thing about Mark is number one, he is a podcaster. And I'm here to tell you that makes a difference because they get the medium. And then the number two, he's an award winning graphic artist. So whether you need a PDF for a lead magnet, maybe you need a whole website. I have somebody at the school of podcasting that just hired Mark for their website, or you just need a logo, anything that you want to look good artwork. We've used him here at ask the podcast coach school of podcasting and podcast rodeo show. And the beautiful thing is, and you're not going to get this at Fiverr, He's going to sit down with you one-on-one so he really understands kind of the vibe you're going through, right? He'll even give you a branding kind of audit if you're not sure what the heck branding even means. He'll help you with that. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, go over to podcastbranding.co. You can see all of his his services there, podcastbranding.co. Big thanks, Dan LaFeb, uh, over there at Based on a True Story Podcast at Based on a True Story Podcast.com. It's still the best mug ever. ever. Dan. Thanks for sending that over. Uh, you know, he has been going through, Dan's been going through these um, this week. Uh, so, movies that took place this week in time and his last episode for, for February 20th, Malcolm X, Flags of Our Fathers, and Patton. If you're, it's a, that's a good exercise, Dave, in him repurposing content, right? This is yeah. stuff he's already done and he's bringing them back and organizing them by month and then kind of condensing them down. And so if you need something new to listen to, or you want an idea of how to repurpose your content, head over there based on a true story podcast.com. Dan, thanks for your sponsorship. And uh, we want to thank Chris Stone, but Chris called it. I had, remember where we had the weird green line that would come through? Occasionally on my, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize you had to do things like this on a Mac because you know it just works on a Mac. Uh, my drive, my <laughs> easy, easy, yeah, easy. <laughs> my driver was outdated. And, oh, and the minute yeah, I updated yeah. my driver, um, good. It uh, took care of that because I went, I went back into stream. I just let it sit there, and I'm like, all right, because I can see it every time it happened. That was uh, nice of him to point that out, and um, yeah, I should have listened. Being the being the PC Mac guy that I am, I should have given. I said, "Hey, should you have updated the driver?" We just didn't spend any time really talking about no. it. You were like, "I'm on the PC," and then we were yeah, we we were, we're on the show go. to get it done. I just did a uh, Google search while you were talking. You can find Chris Stone at Casta C A S T A Head dot net. So nice. again. I didn't plan on it, but 2023 has been kind of the year of keep it simple. And one of the things that I've, I've at least at this point going, hmm, uh, when I first started doing video, I bought two lights that clamped on your desk. It had a remote that had an on-off switch. It had a brightness thing and then the make it orange or not, et cetera, kind of option to it. And on occasion, I would lose the remote, which is really dumb. But anyway, so when Stream Deck came out, I was like, oh, that, you know, again, bright, shiny, look at the buttons and it's, ooh, you know, 
So I ended up buying, you don't need to do this, but I bought Elgato lights because Elgato makes the stream deck and blah, blah, blah. And I'm here to tell you, and it works with OBS. So when everything is cool, when I'm doing videos, I can do stuff live and put me in the bottom right-hand corner and have words come up. It's really cool for making videos. And I swear there was like last month, every time I turned around, OBS would update and it would ruin everything. And then mm. Stream Deck or the, you know, there's some sort of control center from Elgato. Yep. It would update and then OBS wouldn't work. It was just like, I was like, I kind of missed the days where I just had a remote. And if I wanted to turn the lights on, I hit a button. <laughs> it was like. So the switch the switch on the wall. Remember those days? Oh, yeah. It came on every time. Oh. It never <laughs> failed. It never was like, oh, I need an update. Or it was never. It, and it didn't delay. Have, have you noticed? It's yeah. some, some home oh, yeah. automation. Like you, you tell it to come on and then you're like, mm. I had the, uh, the batteries died in the remote and I was like, wait, I have to get up and push a button on the TV. And then it dawned on me, there is no button on the TV anymore. If you, <laughs> if you don't have a remote, nope. you're, you're not changing. Or they're it. hidden. Yeah. They're hidden. Like our TV, oh, yeah. you can barely see them in the bottom right hand corner. They're there, you know, but you'd have to like have x-ray vision. And some of those kinds of things to actually see them. Yeah. Remember when those things were easy? Uh, you know, I just remember, I'm not being the old guy. My house is full of home automation. <laughs> Let's just be really clear about that. Well, I just remember a commercial would come on and you had a commercial to go to the kitchen, uh, like grab a Pepsi, whatever, because there was no pause. There was no fast forward, you know. Anyway, um, hey, speaking of uh, drivers. DR said, I had a driver issue last week. Couldn't figure out why my mouse kept going out. Went through four four mouses in three months. And then I got smart. Had the geek squad rescue me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those little things are, it's, because that's the thing. It's so weird that, you know, all of a sudden when things just stop working. So uh, that's the other joy, though. Speaking of that, I have a wireless mouse and keyboard. And I replace the battery in that Whoa. thing every month just uh, I've never run into that problem because I don't let the battery uh, go out. Uh, I won't. I won't podcast with wireless. It's got to be wired. Yeah. I just too too. Listen, yeah. you be you, Dave. You be you. <laughs> you're if it works for you and you're changing the battery every month and you remember to do that. Yeah, awesome. But uh, uh, too many times early in the podcasting, I tried to do that stuff because you want a clean desk, right? Yeah, that's why I did. Oh, dude, I'm if you could wired. see my desk, right? You can almost not see my desk at this. It's just a. <laughs> It's just a pile of cameras and cables and <laughs> so, wireless so speakers. And, wires coming yeah. off keyboards are yeah. the least of your concern. Dogs but, and but. cats. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing I definitely did want to hit today, and okay. I've heard this a, like a lot in the past two weeks. I keep running into people, and they're like, well, how do I start a podcast? I'm like, oh, well, Samson Q2U, PodTrack P4, Audacity, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, um, PodPage put out a, a blog we might talk about here in a second. But they, they, I get that. They're taking notes and they're like, great. And then uh, this has to be video, right? And I go, mm. no. They're like, well, no, it has to be on YouTube, right? And I'm like, well, it doesn't have to. I, like, if you want to do YouTube, you can. But now we're going to be talking lights and cameras and everything else. And I'm like, but you don't have to do video if you don't want to. And the one person's like, oh, thank God. Like, I was worried about I'm going to have to, you know, look pretty and get the backdrop. I'm like, no, it can be just audio only. So somehow there's this underlying theme now that if you're going to start a podcast, mm -hmm. it has to be on YouTube. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, no, uh, you know, it's and on the other hand, just to go the other side, I hear people say podcasting is only audio. No, um, Google Ask a Ninja Back in 2005-ish. Oh, classic. Yeah, Ask a Ninja, uh, Tiki Bar or something. Um, there are a bunch of video podcasts. In fact, Ask, Ask a Ninja at one point was on Netflix. It was so popular. Uh, so you can have a video podcast as well. But the point is, it can be audio or video or both. And if you really want to get your nerd on, it could be a PDF. Uh, but I just hear people like it has to be, you know... Uh, it has to be video. And I'm like, no. I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but I'll just say it again. I, I listened to this podcast, this whiskey podcast, and they just moved. They have two, they had two different styles of podcast, a long form podcast, and then a, a 30 minute short form. 30 minutes, I know for some isn't short, but for them it was because they do right. a two hour, they do a two hour and a 30 minute. 
they moved the 30 minute to YouTube and it's only on YouTube. And they took the, they, they're not, they took it out of their feed. They're not, per, you know, they're not putting it in their podcast feed anymore. And I am really struggling to, to make that shift. Mm. I was used to consuming their content in the car on the way to work. That's the way I liked it. That's not convenient for me. And they keep telling listeners, well, just open up the YouTube app and hit play in your car and then put your phone down. So, and I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, that, that's not what I want. Like right. I wanted, I, I was used to having it in your feed and I'm getting, you know, it's, it's a real struggle. I haven't, they've produced three episodes. I haven't listened to any of them. And I was a regular listener. So I think, and I know what they're trying to do, right? They're trying to drive people because they have this, this idea. They think, oh, we've got to be on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> right? Because people were asking for it. So they're, they're driving it to YouTube thinking like, okay, we'll only put it on YouTube and that'll drive everybody over there. I think that's a bad call, just to be honest. I think they should have kept it in the feed and moved it to YouTube. The people who wanted to consume it on YouTube would. The people that still wanted it in the feed would. You'd grow your audience, not divide them. Mm. And I think sometimes we think, you know, and again, there's this big pressure, too, from a monetization standpoint. I don't know why I struggled to say monetization, but I just did. With, from a monetization standpoint, uh, I get it. You're trying to get the numbers there so you can start getting in. The more people you get, the more views. But I get all that, right? But it when you when you alienate your your listeners, you got to give them more options, not less. Yeah, you know, I just it it's it's frustrating to me, and I'm losing engagement in it, and I'm not listening to it as much as I did. And and so I, I just I'm not a fan of removing options for listeners. I'm more of a fan of giving them more options. I did a thing. This I did a webinar for Libsyn this week, and that is uh, that's always interesting. When I become the voice of Libsyn, I become much more focused and like I try to stay on topic and that whole nine yards. But I was explaining how, and this isn't a Libsyn thing. This could be Captivate Buzzsprout. Make sure you're in all the directories, and I have people like, oh, I'm going to be in Apple and Spotify. And I'm like, wait, have you never heard of this thing called Amazon? or iHeartRadio that gets promoted all the time. And so I looked at my last year's stats for the School of Podcasting, and I had 6,900 and some downloads that weren't Apple and Spotify. And I'm like, anybody want 6,000 downloads? Here's a novel idea. Put your show. A lot of those were Stitcher. Now, that's partly due because, I mean, I was in Stitcher the early days, and now it's not even Stitcher. It's the Simple Cast something partner portal. They, they rebranded it. And I'm like, yeah, Chris has it exactly, getting all the phone books. And I I always use the analogy of, uh, you know, kids that are dressed up for Halloween don't care what house the candy came from. They just want more candy. And podcasters, in theory, shouldn't care where they came from unless you're trying to sell something that is specifically U.S.-based or U.K.-based and you kind of want people just from this area. Most of the time, we just want more downloads. And that's another one that I'm, I'm just like, who is like, wh- why is this happening? Like, like, like the teacher in me goes, okay, here's a problem. I think we can fix it through education, but who's educating people that you only need to be in Google? Like, why are people thinking I just need those two? I'm like, that's the part yeah. that always uh, makes me scratch my head. And uh, you had mentioned, uh, well, I, I did too, the whole video YouTube thing. And here's what's going to make things even more blurry I'll uh, put a link to this out in the show notes, but YouTube actually, remember at Podcast Movement, I was in that room. There was standing room only. YouTube was going to make this giant announcement, and then they brought some YouTuber up who then explained how fun YouTube was. But uh, they announced that um, uh, YouTube will soon uh, start to bring both audio and video first podcasts. So that's an interesting video first podcast to YouTube music for users in the U S which is odd because the last time I checked, I thought podcasting was global. So why only the U S um, making podcasts more discoverable and accessible uh, with more regions to come. Yeah. We've heard that before. That's so odd. This will uh, help make the podcast that users already love on YouTube which again, we could die on that hill if we want to, but there are no podcasts on YouTube. There are content creators, but you know, the whole RSS thing. But anyway, um, this will help make the podcast that users already love on YouTube available in all the places they want to listen. 
So maybe you need to tell your, your buddies that. Um, we're also rolling out podcast creation in YouTube Studio, making it easier for creators to set their videos as podcast. Again, a little bit of a like, hmm, what does that mean? Uh, podcast playlists will be eligible for current and upcoming podcast features on YouTube, such as eligi- eligibility for youtube.com slash podcast, which the last time I went to that was just a bunch of YouTubers. Um, podcast badging, that's a verb. I'm going to badge you. Podcast badging <laughs> and inclusion in the YouTube music app. So basically they're they're pulling the playbook out of Spotify and they're throwing podcasts into a music app. Uh, later this year, we will offer support for creators to upload their audio podcasts via RSS feeds directly to YouTube. Um, now, the interesting things, um, listeners will be able to consume podcasts with a locked screen, a feature that only uh, was available to, on YouTube Music to paying customers, but apparently that's going to be for everybody. Um, the product will unify the audio and video experience for the audience. Okay, or so you say. This is likely to be achieved with a switch to turn on the video um, and is currently seen in YouTube Music for songs. There will be a podcast badge. I want a podcast badge um, to designate shows and enhance library tools. Um, Podcasts in YouTube Music will only be available for the U.S. for now, though creator tools and features within YouTube will be available globally. And in this case, I'm reading this off of uh, podnews.net. As one example, Pod News Daily is marked as a podcast and plays globally. And, and James goes on to say that, you know, there are 80 million premium subscribers globally where Spotify has 205 million, apparently, I guess. Yeah. Paid, paid, paid subscribers. subscribers. Yeah. yeah. So there's yeah. a, yeah. So it'll be interesting yeah. to, to see. Um, but, but here's the stat that's. That's amazing to me. Yeah. YouTube has 2 billion users. Yeah. And when right? I when I saw that, I was like, you know, this could be huge. This could be a really big thing if it takes off. But, you know, it's like, hmm, if they'd only taken – oh, that's the other thing. Google Podcast is not going away. They're like, nope, if you want <laughs> – Did it ever arrive? <laughs> right. Let's just be really clear. Yeah. So <laughs> – so that's interesting, but I'm just like, well, if this takes off, my whole thing is, and there are people that are, you know, wondering if they're going to like, are they going, it's not, is it going to be passed through where, you know, you're going to be playing your podcast on, uh, you know, Buzzsprout or whatever, Captivate, Libsyn. Yeah. Is that still going to count? Or are they going to pull it over? Because originally Spotify used to host your file. And then, of course, they're going to put ads in front of it. Because my whole thing is that's really Google's business. They sell ads. And I'm like, my guess is they're just going to, you know, because I think Spotify does this. Somebody said that if you listen to podcasts on Spotify, they put ads before them. And I go, I don't know. I'm a premium Spotify user, so I don't get ads. But uh, it was uh, interesting. But uh, Dan has a point here. He says, um, hey, um, Google did podcasts in a music app before with Google Play Music. Yep. Now the Google Play Music is YouTube Music. So I wonder if for the, you know, if the experience for podcasts is going to be any better. It'd be interesting to see. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, didn't they do this once before? And also, what's kind of dumb about this and James brought this up is when they rolled podcasting out on Amazon, it was US only. And yeah. you know, Amazon's barely in the top 10. You know, and think about all the people, you know, yeah, that are using that um, he had a bunch of them that for whatever reason, these companies, instead of, you know, they kind of treat the U S like a beta group and I'm like, no, just let it go. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's like launching a product three times, you know, here it is. And then everybody's like, woo. And then the next time it launches, what everybody's like, well, that's old news. It's why are you telling me that again? Well, it's in a different country or whatever. I'm like, no, just get everybody talking about how cool it is. I don't know. It'd be, um, uh, be interesting to see. Yeah. And especially if they yeah. start hosting stuff, I'm like, oh, that could be, that could make things very interesting because they host videos. You know, if you think about it, they do host videos. Yeah. Although pass through video would be a little, it would nego- it would have gone nowhere. <laughs> like right. YouTube, it, they had to host the videos. Otherwise, that it would have gone nowhere in those days. Right. Now, I think that's just an expectation that they're going to do it. 
you know, be a host provider for that. Yeah. Be interesting to see. Listen, Google's in a little bit of a, uh, there's a lot of turmoil going on at Google right now. And so it'll be interesting to see if this podcast team, whatever it is, can stay focused long enough. This has always been their problem is they start with this and then they get on, they, they get unfocused and they lose. And then pretty soon you never hear about it again, you know, and then they're killing it. I mean, it's just kind of that, it's kind of that same song, second verse for them pretty consistently. So listen, I wouldn't, if I was a betting person and I'm not, I don't, I don't gamble very often. I would not gamble on this one. No. I wouldn't get any high hopes about it. if it comes along, Certainly, we need to take advantage of it. Like, if it came out and I could get my podcast feed in there via yeah. RSS and I could just submit it, I absolutely would. If I needed to do a little bit of work each week to post it to YouTube in there, in that in that form, in an RSS form. I mean, I already posted on my channel, but if I wanted to post it via, via RSS, I'd do the work. If it took 10 minutes, I'd do the work. It'd be worth it for that, right? But I, I don't know if I would, I'd make big plans around it. Well, I, I still remember when Google Podcasts came out and they were like, we're going to make, like, we're going to take podcasting to the next level. It's going to be number one and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah, and I have to change one of my slides. I have a presentation about how you can get more stats that I'm doing a podcast movement. And one of them was how you could see what people were searching for to find your podcast. Well, Google has stepped away from that feature uh, and it's no longer you know, available in Google podcast manager. And I was like, ah, now I got to change the slide. Uh, you know, so it's tricky. Chris said, uh, speaking of video said I was on a podcast this week and, uh, they chose anchor as a host Ew, and only had the audio <laughs> and video on Spotify. So, um, and only have the audio and video on Spotify. The thing that's interesting about this, when I looked into it, cause that's the podcast coach as a video is on Spotify. But here's the thing. The only way you can see the video is on the app, and I th- think that's true, and I think you have to be a paid subscriber. That I'm not sure of, but I just remember, like, I uploaded, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just put the video version of Ask the Podcast Coach. If I'm going to make this a podcast, uh, I'll throw it on Anchor, and then I'll grab my RSS feed that I have to request and go in and dig out, and I'll put that RSS feed into Apple and all the other places, and I'll just use Anchor as my video host. Well, guess what? The video doesn't go into the RSS. It only mm-hmm. goes to Spotify and only on the app. I think that's it. I don't know about the premium thing, but I was just like, once again, you know, Spotify comes out. They're like, hey, we got this cool feature, and then you always have to look for the asterisks. It's like, oh, video has come to Spotify. Well, only on the app. It doesn't work in the feed. And only and how, how do you get that video into there so it goes to? You Spotify? have to go to Anchor. Ah, yeah. So I'm in Anchor. <laughs> I, I have an Anchor account for Ask the Podcast <laughs> Coach, which is you know I still have uh, Fat Fifty and Frisky. Uh, that's a show I have on uh, Spotify, <laughs> and it's done. It's the uh, the host is Carl Spackler. Do you know who Carl Spackler is? No, Mm-mm. Carl Spackler is the guy from uh, you know. Oh, the guy. golf guy. Yeah, from so he's always Kesha. like, well, you know, I, I had some Cheetos and, you know, uh, yeah, it was, that's such a weird one. Um, Fat yeah. 50 and Frisky? Fat 50 and Frisky is the name Fat of Fat 50. Frisky was a, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Chris says, part of the issue here is cramming spoken audio into a music app. There's a novel idea. Apple works because they aren't trying to unscrabble eggs and keeping podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have Apple Music and they have Apple Podcasts. Which one you want? And you think about how many times this has been tried. You know, they're they're yeah. mm, so it's always secondary at Google. It's always secondary to what they're currently. Again, they're an advertising company, yeah. so we're, they're always going to come at it from an ads standpoint. If it doesn't make sense from ads, they're not going to give it priority. And it all sounds great when they're planning these things, but then they get halfway through and they're like, "Yeah, this isn't going to work." I mean, they just, they, they, they don't, they don't know how to see it through all the way to the end. And I don't think they really want to. That's the thing. I think they start trying these things and then they get some numbers and they get cold feet and they're like, ah, just go back to YouTube. That works. (laughs) You know, that works. I just go, we'll just go to google.com. We know how to do those things. And they're just not a good, they're just not going to be good at this. Well, Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to be good at it. And you mentioned, you think about, they have two things that are, 
like messing up the the world of Google. One is TikTok. Uh, from what I understand, oh, yeah. there are, there oh, are yeah. there are TikTok yeah, yeah. ads, um, yeah. and then the other one is Chat GPT. So mm-hmm. I've got a you know I've got somebody at the gates attacking YouTube, and I got somebody at the gates attacking search. Yeah, they're ripe for disruption. Yeah, they are ripe. Yeah, it, can we take a tangent? You yeah, ready? totally. Ten totally. Let's tangent. do it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to make a million dollars doing this. We need to come up with a new way to package cereal. Because you open up the box, there's the plastic bag that you can't can't get opening, oh, totally. and you yes. either rip it Agreed. open and cereal Agreed. goes everywhere, and then you you somehow after you get it open, I just use scissors, and somehow we think when we fold up the bag, like that's somehow I don't know going to keep it fresh. And I was just like, you know, in a world where we put a man on the moon, we should have a way to <laughs> easier way to get it to my I can't get to my golden grams. You know, it's like whatever. So um, we buy it in the bags. We buy the bag. Uh, you know, the and, big and then you get the big plastic brand bag. Yeah, and we have a yeah. Then we have a Tupperware. Uh, you know, they're not a sponsor. Yeah, we have a Tupperware uh, container, and you just you know, zzit, and then open it up and pour it in. the The problem is, is there's no you, you can't have a container for just one bag because the bags are bigger than the containers, right? Ah, of course. And so you just have this measurement problem. Then you got to store the bag somewhere else. I, Dave Jackson, I I would vote for you for president if you <laughs> fixed the cereal. Problem. I just last night I was doing this and it's like, <laughs> how is this still a problem? Like, you know what I mean? Who you know who solves a problem for me? Yeah. Is our awesome supporters? We again. I want to thank um, Chris. Is the uh, the awesome supporter of the month, Chris? I I think I got your website wrong. If you can put, I because I'm on whatever that website is, castahead.net, and I he put something in the uh, the chat that kind of hinted that maybe that's not the right website. But uh, let me know what your website is. I'll definitely give you a shout out before the end of the show. Uh, you can find these people at askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. And, uh, of course, we're using PodPage. If you want to try PodPage, go over to trypodpage.com. Monday show on the School of Podcasting, I was talking to somebody, and they're like, I took your PodPage class. That is amazing. And I was like, I told you. And, uh, hey, if you want more Jim Collison, and who doesn't, go over and check out Home Gadget Geeks at theaverageguy.tv. And if you want to start a podcast, well, when you think podcasting, think School of Podcasting. And uh, there we go. ChrisStone.contact is where you can find him or castahead.net. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, the School of Podcasting, I'm uh, I'm moving platforms again. Normally, I do not do this, and I do not take it lightly, but I'm moving to a thing called New Zendler, which is so much better than uh, – I was using Podia, and Podia is not a bad system as long as everything you want to do, Podia does, but they do not let you color outside the lines. Uh, so that's uh, – uh, it's, it's the school of podcasting is about to get really even more interesting. But uh, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, uh, we deeply appreciate it. Uh, just go over to ask the podcast coach.com slash support. So uh, speaking of, of pod page, they put out a blog post. Uh, I will put a link to this in the show notes because I'm getting, you know, it's that time of year where the people that thought they were going to start a podcast in January have realized that it's almost March and they're like, oh, yeah, I was going to start a podcast. So uh, I don't know if Brendan put this out, um, but uh, it's 15. I just saw the title. Uh, Top 15 things all beginner podcasts should know before and after the launch. Um, so uh, number one, develop a strong idea. Um, what's a strong idea? What, what what comes to your mind when you think of that? Jim? Well, it's it's I think – for a while there, we were so many, the podcasting was so hot. Someone was saying they were putting the solution before the problem. Mm. They were like, Oh, I have to do a podcast. Well, what am I going to do it about? <laughs> Instead of being like, you know what? I've got something to say, or I've, I, I, I need to use this audio format to solve a problem. At Gallup, we have 14,000 certified coaches all around the world, all in different places, all doing different things. We use our podcast to reach them and doesn't reach all of them. Not all of them are going to listen to it that way, but it's part of the solution, right? So I think we need to spend time thinking through like, what problem are we trying to solve? That could be one thing. Listen, you can do your podcast uh, for just for fun. Like if you want to get on Wait, the microphone what? and talk. 
That's okay too. Now, I don't know how many listeners you'll get that way. And even uh, to be honest with you, solving a problem, you know, you would think our podcast should do maybe tens of thousands of downloads with 14,000 certified coaches and a big customer base. Well, we do more like five, right? Uh, and so 5,000. So you you would think, oh, that's, well, okay, you're not going to reach everybody that way. So have, I think, uh, you know, have some realistic expectations, but we'll talk about that here in tip number two. But when you go to develop that strong idea, right, I think this is where you've got to just spend some time saying, what problem do I want to solve and how long do I want to solve it for? Yeah. <laughs> you know? The um, the next episode of the School of Podcasting, I interviewed a bunch of veteran podcasters that have had success and they're launching a new show. And it really kind of – one of the things they did is, okay, how are we going to be different? And that is a tough yeah. question to answer. Yeah. But they, they came up with some things. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, number two, research your target audience. And to me, the, the biggies are why am I doing this and who is it for? And then it's just a matter of you cross those streams and wherever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you can talk about to hold their attention while getting them to do whatever the heck is – you know, if you want a more exposure, if you're trying to sell something or whatever it is, it's the, why am I doing this? Who is it for? And then what can I talk about that's going to hold their attention, but yet get me to my, my why. And yeah, well, and, and know how big that, that audience is, <laughs> you yeah. know, then the, 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 the more you niche down, the more engagement you'll get, which is great, but those numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller as you're doing that. So I think in the research side of things, get a realistic idea of, hey, how big is the potential audience for this? And where do I find them? Like, where do they hang out? Where's wh where's a place I can go? You know, if you're going to do cosplay, say you're going to do a cosplay podcast. Yeah. And if you're not currently going to all the cosplay events that are near, you should probably start checking that out, right? You should probably, you're probably going to need to go to some of those. Do you have the budgets to travel and some of those kinds of things? I think, or again, you don't have to, you could do a podcast without doing it, but I think it might help. Yeah. The, again, the more you know what they want and the more you give them what they want, the more chance they're going to tell a friend, yeah. but you, you can yeah, yeah. knit yourself out. If you're like, all right, I'm going to do a show about being more confident. Wait, more confident parent. Wait, more confident first time parent. Okay, wait, 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 more confident first time interracial parent. And then you're like, oh, now we've got a really tight niche. Okay, one more. Uh, uh, more confident first time interracial parent that's left handed. Okay, now you've 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 niched down <laughs> a little too far in in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Exactly. Yeah, you can you can niche your down. It's stuff. local. It's a local, local podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, number three, how to record quality audio. Yeah. And this really is, it's weird that it's so easy to do. And yet so many people end up with a blue Yeti that's three feet away from them, picking up in every direction, or they're using a built-in, uh, you know, laptop mic, all sorts of fun stuff there. But um, it, it's, it, and I think I spend a lot of time with my guests, and I, we have different guests all the time, right? Uh, Home Gadget Geeks, fortunately, I do mostly podcasters, so that that works out. I don't have to coach them all the time, but on the on the Gallup side, I'm always coaching people, and even internally, I'm coaching them. And it's surprising how many people have no idea how to get to good audio. And for a while, we shipped these pucks, these little audio pucks yeah. around the world to people. And they're like, I got a new puck. And I said, that's some of the worst audio I've ever heard. Yeah. Like it, it's a, t I know it works great for a conference call, yeah. but not for recording. Right. And I, I always tell them, like, do you have the headset that we sent you at the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah. Do you have that headset? Oh yeah. No, it's in the closet. I'm like, pull it out because I need that mic close to you. It's just the best sound is going to be. And I'm always surprised. That, oh, you you know, you're a sound Nazi yeah. and some of those kinds. Of, yeah, yeah, I am. Actually, I am. Yes, that's true. My brand, you know what I mean? Uh, it's what I'm It's what I'm doing to, to try to get you the best sound. Fundamentally, I have found most people, you got to help people get there. Most people yeah. don't know how to get good sound. They don't know what they sound like. They don't really care. They, you know, you just got to, you, you got to help them get there. Yeah, I, uh. The, a member of the school of podcasting bought the attachment for the the road headset thing. Mm -hmm. It sounds pretty like it's again. It's not going to sound like you know a non headset, but for a headset, it sounded pretty cool. So I, I mm -hmm. might uh, get one of those mm -hmm. and strap it on here when uh, 
one Saturday. Number four, and this one I always tell is, is establish a schedule. And so I always tell people, you know, they'll come in, I'm going to do a daily show. And I'm like, mm, record a couple episodes uh, and figure out, wow, that just took me 15 hours to do a whatever, 20 minute podcast or whatever. Okay. Um, do you have 15 hours a week to do that? And if you go, no, well then guess what? You're not doing a weekly show, you know, and, and figure out what your schedule is. Try to, you know, I see so many people come up with a podcast schedule and then they try to fit their life into it. Right. No, no, no. Um, figure out how long does it take to make a podcast episode and then fit it into your life. Cause otherwise it's just not gonna, yeah. not gonna work. And the other thing I see, I just did a video of this on my YouTube channel that when we talk about consistency of schedule, I, I would much rather get a late show that was good than an on time show that was meh. And I'm like, cause in the end it's, you know, well, it's Thursday. I, I, you know, I told you I'd get an episode out. I'm like, I hit stop on that podcast every time. Cause that person is going to waste 20 I, minutes of your time. I'd rather see you start one a month and do it. And then if you have the time, once you get better at it, speed that up than to start weekly or daily. I mean, remember when daily was popular? Uh, Everybody oh, was, yeah. oh, I got to have a John Lee Dumas did it. That's I got to do it daily. I have to do it. Anyways, I'd rather than you, then you start weekly and you can kind of hear it in people's voices when you're listening to those podcasts and they're all stressed out and yeah. like, ah, I missed this and I'm sorry. Like you said, yeah. I'm sorry is the, is the worst way. Is, well, and it's, it's the telltale sign. You don't have enough time. Yeah. Like you, you don't, that's the red flag. I don't have enough time. If you're, if you're apologizing, you don't have enough time in your life to support this. And so I'd much rather you start hearing that. And then you got to start pulling back from that. Cause you, in your intro, you said a weekly podcast that, right. So I'd rather you start slower. And by the way, I think this is the right way to add a second podcast too. Hmm. just go monthly. Like, you're going to yeah. do it, start it, and then work your way into it to make sure you have enough time to do it. Absolutely. Then number five, uh, pick a good recording setup. So this is where when I first moved into this house and there was no carpet in here and it was just like, wow, this is I'm going to have to do something to this room. So immediately carpet came in, uh, pretty thick curtains on the windows, things like that. But this is where, you know, you don't have to have a Sure SM7B. You know, Samson Q2U, Jim's using the ATR2100. You know, you don't have to spend a gazillion dollars on that, but you do have to spend some money. Uh, but, you know, if you if your hobby is, you know, running up and down stairs, you know, the shoes are not free. So keep that in mind as well. <laughs> well, and ear, earbuds, ear, if you're doing an interview show, earbuds, yeah. earbuds, earbuds, or headphones. Yeah. I'm an earbud guy. I always have been. You like using the cans. doesn't matter. You just can't have their sound coming out of speakers. Yeah. You can't yeah. get it. And I and I recommend, you know, a lot of these solutions have uh, headphone jacks, uh, even this 2100 does, that come out and you can plug into it. Not my recommendation. Come out of your, you know, come out of the device, run it through a headphone amplifier first, mm -hmm. and then bring it to yours. That way you have some control over that sound. And, you know, the the 2100's muffled for some reason. I don't know why. The Yeti is muffled as well. I never liked the direct feedback from those. You want to hear exactly how you sound. If you can put an audio interface in front of it, you're going to spend 100 to $300 to yeah. do that. Um, but you're going to get a, a headphone amplifier out of it. Get that, get the truest sound that you can back to your ears. So you know exactly how you sound. I, I think that does wonders for your audio quality. Yeah. Chris says, and no AirPods. They always seem to have yeah. issues. Yeah. Oh, for that sure. That goes back to the whole wireless discussion. For Everything sure. should be wired. <laughs> yeah. Um, it'd be great. It'd be great if they worked. They don't. I, they, 99 times no nine out of ten times let's just not let's not be crazy yeah they they, they run they run out of battery in the middle of things i they're always tapping them or oh i tapped it by mistake and now i can't hear you yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that. we kind of combined five and six five was uh you know pick a good recording setup and six is pick a good recording space yeah. so I, the one that always makes me nervous is the person that's podcasting in their car as they're driving and i'm like isn't that the definition of distracted driving? <laughs> I'm like, probably. I'm like, you, you hear that hiss, that hum of yeah. the road noise yeah. behind well, it. You, you just hear the turn signal. You know, yeah. and you're like, really? Like, well, you also talk louder yeah. in the car. 
yeah. right? You because t- you yeah. you can't hear yourself, yeah. and so you're talking louder. So your voice goes up just a little bit. When we're doing here, you can only handle that for so long. Yeah, I remember one. It was a, a a guy trying to be a sports agent. That was his whole thing. So you're right. You've got the whole going on in the background, <laughs> and he's like, and I, I think yeah, his sure. idea was. I'm so busy, and I've I've got so much going on that I have to podcast in the car, and I'm like, yeah, and I can't. Mm. It's it's so distracting. The audio was so bad, and I was just recouping like, that time in the car. Though I mean, th- yeah. there are, there probably are some times when that makes sense. It's just harder, right? It's just harder to yeah. It, it's harder to get it good. Not not impossible. You can right. listen again. You can do anything you want, right? Just it's it makes it more difficult sometimes. Yeah, number seven. Publish multiple episodes before launching. Yes. And actually, uh, Jim's big on this too. I think R- record a few and throw them away, right? Just to get used to it. Um, you know, I've seen people that will record an episode or uh, an interview and, and they interviewed somebody just to interview somebody. And I'm like, but how does this fit in with the, the scope of the show? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, you should probably just ditch that. Was it a friend or somebody? Well, it was, you know, and I'm like, yeah, there are times when, you know, I always say uh, writers have rough draft, actors have dress rehearsals, athletes have preseason. There are things that you kind of start off with that, you know, maybe you don't want to put that out just yet. But I, it's hard because you just spend all these hours, you know, practicing. You want to. Mm-hmm. You want to throw it out there, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. It's like it's a baby that you're, yeah, you're throwing it out, but you got to do it. Yeah, you just have to. Uh, number eight, have a website. Yes, for heaven's sake, uh, and that website should be a website. If you want to, you know, get some SEO going, that does not mean a link tree. Link trees are fine for those. And I, what well, gets me about the whole link tree thing, and I have one um, that I use in rare occasions, but. Making a link tree on your website, so just a page with a bunch of links, is not that hard. You know what I mean? I'm like, so why are you paying twenty dollars for link tree when you could spend twenty bucks on pod page and have a full website and the whole nine yards? I'm like, that's mm-hmm. that's that's always kind of a head scratcher. Um, number nine, leverage your network. Um, I think this is something, you know, Jim, you have a pretty big network at this point, besides yeah. the Gallup thing. I mean, you've had a ton of guests on and Yeah. 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 And it's changing all the time. That's the kind of the cool thing, you know, after 11 years of home gadget geeks, the guest lineup looks very different now than it did, you know, 10 years ago. And you just, I think for me, I would also say constantly be refreshing your network, oh, yeah. get to know some new people, invite some new folks in like, you know, it's great. And, and again, you can do anything you want. If you want to have three guys that are doing or three people, individuals doing a podcast for you know 10 years you can do it that way that works but as far as helping get the word out that, that kind of helps too you know and just be nice to people i think leverage your your network by being nice to them well <laughs> yeah. yeah ariel ariel nissenblatt is she works for squad cash she works for sounds profitable she works for a bunch of people and i've met her a few times she's she's cool and so she just launched a new show with another person called the podcast trailer park podcast and it's where they review trailers of podcasts and then talk about it and all this other stuff and i've heard uh james cridlin i've heard a bunch of people mention this because she reached out to her network and said hey i'm launching this new show and nobody's doing like nobody's writing her name in the sky it's just like hey can you let your audience know that there's a podcast that if you're trying to discover new podcasts they might want to, you know, do that. So that's a, a just a leveraging your network doesn't mean they have to, you know, you're not asking them to come move you to a new apartment. That's yeah. Well, I've I've leveraged this network. Like I've had, there's, you know, yeah. uh, Uncle Marv has been on my show. He fits. He's a perfect fit for home gadget geeks. And I've had him on. I'm going to continue to have him on until he says no. <laughs> like I, enough, Jim. I've had enough of you. Um, but I've leveraged this network to 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 branch out to find. I don't worry about the listeners as much as I do about the 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 hosts that join me. Much more important to get great quality there. The listeners will come if we get great quality guests. The the listeners will come, so I, I don't worry about that as much. Yeah, number ten, optimize for search engines. So use keywords related to your topic and include them in your descriptions, especially in your titles. Yeah. Um, all that fun stuff to. Uh, you know, people, I think, 
I, I don't know. I, I don't hear many people really like focusing on Google. It's like an afterthought. And I'm like, I, I installed the, um, I know there's the Yoast plugin. I think I'm using the all in one SEO podcast, mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And it's always like, wait, where's your keyword, man? And I'm like, Oh, all right. I guess. And then you look at it, you go, Oh yeah, it would make sense to, uh, to do that. So then number 11, monetize your podcast wisely. And here's the other one we talked about earlier where people are like, wait, I don't have to do a podcast on YouTube. I've heard multiple people say this in the past week and a half. Well, I've been podcasting for, I don't know, four years, six months, you know, 12 and a half, whatever it is, it's some time period. So I'm going to monetize now. And I'm like, it's not based on length. It's based on how many people are listening and who, who they are. It's not, you know, I always kind of make the joke. I've been playing the guitar since I was 12. I don't have a Grammy yet. It's not based on how long you've been doing something. It's your audience. And so, um, you know, that, that's one. Uh, what else does he say here? Uh, make sure that the monetization always add values to your listeners. For instance, if you get a brand deal, make sure it's a product and service that, you know, your audience might use. There's a novel idea. I've been watching YouTubers do this where they're like, Hey, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh, Right. Yeah. And you're like, okay, it's not like HelloFresh did not reach out to them and say, you'd be a sponsor. They're just using the affiliate, you know, relationship that they have with HelloFresh, And you get, if you, you know, if you use that affiliate, you get boxes for free and, you know, you get paid that way. And it's actually a little easier to do affiliate from a tax perspective sometimes, yeah. right. Than it is to get paid anyway. So I was like, you know what? Why don't I try that on Home Gadget Geeks? Like, just say, hey, this, and I'm not going to say this. This is sponsored by because it's not. I'm going to say this month's affiliate is relationship right. is right. And so I've been throwing that ad in, and I thought this first ad is going to do nothing. And it actually last week somebody used the <laughs> used the code right. And so I think you can. I, I think it's surprising uh, from an affiliate perspective if it fits your niche or niche. You can um, uh, give it a try. Try it out. I've been surprised. I put one at the beginning and one at the end, and I'm going to measure them over the course of the year and see how it goes. And I'm going to rotate them around so they're not always the same thing all the time. So my, you can give that a try, too. My weight loss show was was pretty popular back in the day. It was like 4,000 downloads an episode. And I was using my fitness pal, and then I found this thing called Chronometer. And I made, a, I think, a dollar twenty if somebody actually became a premium user of, of Chronometer. And that paid well for several months. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but that was one where, number one, I downloaded the product. I used it and talked about it from a firsthand point. I'm like, oh, man. Because yeah. I was yeah. like, hey, it does everything that my fitness pal does. And it's uh, cheaper. And it's easier. Like they were one of the first to have where you could scan a barcode and it would put the food into your diary. It was yeah. really cool. So when you find the right product, um, said the guy who wrote the book, profit <laughs> from your podcast. Um, make if sure- only there was a book out there about it. <laughs> <laughs> no laughing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to make you laugh there, Dave. You you specific <laughs> you you specifically said to me don't. <laughs> Don't make me laugh at the show, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's I'm fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm fine until I laugh, and then it's it's over. Uh, learn how to promote your podcast. And that, you know, he says, create social media accounts, leverage your connections again, utilize SEO, make use of advertising platforms like Google Ads and Facebook Ads, and collaborate with other podcasters. So um, I heard, uh, I was listening to What Was That Like This Morning uh, from Scott Johnson. And he gave a shout out to another podcast that was similar to his. So again, find a podcast that you think your audience would listen to, right? That fits in with your brand. And that guy's doing the same thing. He's like, hey, I found the show called What Was That Like? And some people don't want to do that because they're afraid that if I tell somebody about another podcast, they'll go listen to that one and quit listening to mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, then make content that people have to listen to. But they don't want to leave you for yeah. Right. Make content they don't want to leave you for. Yeah. And keep in mind that, uh, you know, um, it's not a case where we're all on a Tuesdays at 730. You know, you can you can listen to me on Monday and, you know, Daniel on Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, number 15, the final thought here, or at least the final tip here is to set goals for your podcast. So it could be time based goals, you know, break down your bigger goals into smaller one. That's just kind of goal 101. Um 
establish measurable goals. So, you know, if um, I know for the longest time I wanted the school of podcasting to get 2000 downloads, I was so close. And when we finally went over it and I was like, all right, cool. You know, so something that you can measure that way. Um, and the other thing he says, track progress and adjust accordingly. And that's really it. You know, you try something, did the numbers go up after I've done it for a couple months? If not, well, okay, we've proven that that's not going to work, you know? So, um, yeah, so we'll put a link to this. Those are 15 tips again. This is on the uh, pod page blog, the top 15 things all beginner podcasts should know before and after launch. And then the other thing is um, realize that some things are going to work and some things aren't. And, you know, you just got to keep trying. And, that well, and some things may take time to work. Mm. You know, I, I remember uh, we when we first started doing affiliate stuff, I used Coinbase as an affiliate. And Man, the first couple of months was nothing. Yeah. And then it started rolling in, right? And so sometimes what you think, like if you do it in a week and you get no feedback, well, it might take two or three or four or five months oh. in some cases. It's funny you mention that done. because uh, in the book, Profit from Your Podcast. You, have you written a book about this? Uh, yes, Proven <laughs> Strategies to Turn Your Listeners into Livelihood. There's a spot I, where I talk about LegalZoom, who was advertising on a very popular show and after like the first month, they're like, we're getting nothing. Like, yeah. you know, we're going to, um, we're sorry, but we're pulling the, the campaign, blah, blah, blah. Second month, all of a sudden, they're like, wait, turn it back on, turn it back on, turn it back on. So it takes a while for, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Coach Dave has a great, he has tip number 16 do mm -hmm. something nice for your spouse. They have to live with you and your podcasting obsession. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, take them to dinner and leave your phone in the car. Oh, good call. You will, good I'm, I'm here to call. tell you that's not on a cold night though. Don't if it's no. really cold, don't yeah. leave or really phone. hot. I've done that. Yeah, where you yeah, leave yeah. the have yeah. you ever done that? You leave the phone on the the you no. know, passenger seat and you come out and you like the, your iPhone's like you killed Melted. me. <laughs> it's yeah, batteries don't do well with cold extreme cold and extreme heat. So make sure you protect those. Yeah. Uh, Neither do humans or dogs. That's don't true. leave your don't yeah. leave your pets in the car either. They don't appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, we're doing a, a shorter show today. Jim has a, a really important meeting to get to, which is, and I want to go. This sounds like so much fun. He's got a granddaughter turning three today. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to throw in because I'm I'm surprised how many people reached out, which is really heartwarming. Um, I live in Ohio, and there was like this massive train derailment, and everybody's yeah. like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "It's about an hour that way." And so I'm okay. I haven't like grown a third nipple yet or anything. Um, but I, I've heard what's weird. And this goes back to the whole, nobody knows what the truth is. I'm listening to talk radio because, you know, I wanted more advertising in my life. Yeah. And um, somebody called in and said, well, we live down um, in Kentucky and there was a parking lot filled with dead birds. Like birds were just dropping from the sky after driving or flying through all this stuff and you're like well okay this why would this guy lie you know but on the other hand it's you know it's the internet and i'm skeptical of everything so that's always kind of fun but i as far you know aside from the fact that i've hmm, interestingly discovered a weird cough <laughs> in the past week and a half um yeah so uh yeah so i'm fine at this point we'll we'll see what happens but luckily because uh, my oh uh, i didn't put two and two together maybe that cough is that's related. it yeah. uh, mm -hmm. come on Mm. Lawsuit, baby. All right. Woo. Yeah. Maybe you should start a hyper local podcast about it. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> so, but uh, what's her name? Erin Brockovich? Is that the one that they did the movie? Yeah. yeah. California one. Yeah. Yeah. She's in Ohio. She's like, hey, because. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is going to be big. This uh, well, is gonna what be they're big. not talking about is like, it just, it's, it's just a mess and it's not making yeah, any of the news. And when a really big yeah. mess doesn't make the news, you go, Hmm. Oh, I wonder why that is. Hmm. So, uh, but uh, Jim, what is coming up on uh, the average guy TV this week? Yeah, lo long time listener on Home Gadget Geeks, long time listener and uh, first time guest Randy Walker joins us. We spent a little time getting to know him, talking about it. Kind of he lives in an apartment, so we kind of talked about some home automation uh, stuff. He's a podcaster as well, so we talked a little bit about his podcasting and stuff. It's kind of just a fun conversation. If you're looking for something light to listen to, Randy's just a great guy. It's already been posted, so check it out, homegadgetgeeks.com. Nice. And on the School of Podcasting, I, I've done a mashup. I interviewed Joe Salcihai, who's the guy from Stacking Benjamins, mm -hmm. and he's had somebody approach him about doing a real estate show 
called Stacking Deeds. And Joe said, I can't do that, but he's helping to produce it. It's kind of like when This American Life launched Serial. And so he, he kind of came on and we talked about things he didn't do. Uh, you know, he's learned stuff in the past 12 years. And so I had that interview and I'm also going to pull in some stuff from Kristen Meisner who wrote the book. So you want to start a podcast and she's been on NPR and all sorts of other stuff. And I got a cool clip, a total mic drop from Jordan Harbinger that I emailed last night. I'm like, please let me use this clip in your show, nice. which is funny nice. that I will email my friends and ask for permission but if it's like a network television show or whatever, I just throw it in and hope they don't sue me. It's really <laughs> dumb. Do as I say, not as I do. But uh, uh, we will be here next week, as always. So get your cereal and get ready to watch your Saturday morning cartoons. That is Ask the Podcast Coach. Wait, wait a minute. Your improved cereal. Uh, that's right. With, right. The, with the new bag. That, whatever it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, thanks to the chat room. Thanks to Mark over at podcastbranding.co and Dan over at based on true story podcast.com. And uh, we'll see you again next week with another episode of Ask the Podcast Coach. Like and subscribe and the bell and all that stuff.